two question paper of CPR. Then I want to show you. Then let's go to the question and see. Okay. Then they say, they say, name the part of the law which regulates the essential elements of the offense. And then name the part of the procedure which should be followed. And then let's go to another question paper. I want to show you something. Okay. This is 2023, May, June. Okay. Let's go down. Which part of the law determines the procedure? Which part of the law determines the elements of offense? You see, the, still the same yes. question. Okay, now yes. let's check. Uh, this is 20, this is November. Let's go and check November. And see. Name part of the law which determines procedure. Name part of the law which determines the element. Still the same question. So there's a two marks for mm -hmm. three, which will be on the examination of the CPR. The two marks, let's see this one, November 2022. Okay. Uh, Okay, this one 2022 has not been searching those questions. Um, okay, so we'll just be picking questions from different question papers and answering those questions. Just pick uh, answers from different and then we answer. Then we are starting with this one. Name part of the law which determines. I told you that this one is adjective. Uh, some call it a procedural a law. That is number one. And the second one which determines the elements is the substance, substantive law. Then it means that when you get into the examination, you have two, three marks. The one procedural is determined by adjective law. And then this one is determined by substantive law. Then it means that now you have a two marks for three. Right? Yes. Yes. Now let's go to, uh, to question. Um, uh, we'll be answering the question paper by answering the same questions but on different uh, question papers so that you can be able to see. Now number 1.1.3 .1 says the deputy... A and B and C are involved in a criminal activity which gave rise to charges of a rape and murders. The public prosecutor, Ms. PP, and the investigative officer, as, as Sergeant H, are of the view that the matter should be heard in a district court briefly discuss the feasibility of this charge. So here they're asking about the type of offense. That's the thing, first thing. So whether the rape can be heard in district. Remember, in the type of offense, Rape cases cannot be heard in a district court. Rape cases can be heard in the regional and can be heard in high court. So the district will never be the court of a first instance for rape. That's how you should answer. Then you get the two marks for free. Then it's one of the cases. Then let's let's check another. Let's have a check another paper. Okay, yes, this one. X and Y are charged with the offense of higher treason. The allegation by the prosecution at the prosecution are that the two accused sold information crucial to the security of the public of an agent representing the country of Zamunda. Then question number one. The national director no no Jodo is of the firm view that the charges against the accused should, when they are arrested, be tried in the regional court due to the nature and seriousness of the offense. Briefly confirm the correctness. 
you must know off by heart that the magistrate court will never hear a case of a treason. Therefore, the high court will always be the first instance, the first court that will hear the case of treason. Magistrate court has no such a jurisdiction. So the, the regional will never hear the case of treason. Therefore, it means that this is incorrect. The case must go straight to the to the high court. The high court. Yes. Then uh, let's go to 1.1.2. Name the process that is used to apply by the DNDPP to bring X and Y from Silo to the Republic of South Africa to the to stand the trial. So those questions, the first section one, they just they just test your knowledge. Then they test your knowledge in a way that you must understand what the questions want. So they just test your name, name the process. So, for example, let me give you an example by Bushiri. Bushiri is out of the country, has escaped. So what is going on with Bushiri? What they must do to, 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 ensure, that, to, to, to ensure that to bring Bushiri back to South Africa? What they must do? Hello. Um, I'm not sure of the concept, but it's, it, I think it's um, ex. I'm not sure. Yeah, extradition. I just want to get extradition is the process which okay. can be used from someone who escaped the country with an offense. They have to apply for extradition. Uh, you are right, extradition. Oh. Yes. Yeah, I wanted. Then to they said that. captaincy is tasked with investigating the charges against X and Y. After the arrest, he sets out to ask questions to X and Y regarding what they know about said offense. Name the process. Name the process that police use to, to ask questions to, the, to, to get the information from criminals. Oh, but that one is very simple. I thought maybe you know by now, because if you are you are arrested by police, you must be interrogated. Is it not what happened in, 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 in by police? Is it not the power police to interrogate? Yeah. Yes, that's it. That's correct. Yes, you must be interrogated. So the police must interrogate you. Uh, those are the questions that... Um, Mm. Let me check this one, 1 1.2. A and B, allegedly, you know, I want to do some uh, big questions because this is all about your understanding. They can bring cases of a uh, different nature. A and B allegedly committed the offense of rape. After arrest, they decide to bring a bail application before the regional court. Identify the part of the party who bears the burden, uh, owners of a proof in such proceedings. Who bears the honors of a proof in a criminal case? Hello, are you still here? Yes. <laughs> Yeah, but you, you read about in ILW 1501 that in the criminal case, the person who bears the honors of a proof is the state. You are arrested by state, so the state must prove beyond a reasonable doubt that you. State yeah. is the prosecutor, prosecutor fall under the state. Yeah, you cannot yes. say the prosecutor. Prosecutor is when your prosecutor works under the state. So if you say the prosecutor, you are like a saying that a. You are like a saying that a, 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 a advocate bears the honors. Advocate works for clients. So the client is the one that bears the honors. So you can't say that the, 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 the prosecutor bears the honors because that guy is just a worker pro, uh, who works for the state. So NPA is under the state. They work for the state. So they bear the, ban, the, the, the burden and they must prove beyond a reasonable doubt. Whereas in a criminal case, in a civil case, they prove on, on the pro preponderance of probability or on the balance of probability. 
Then number two is explaining what they must prove. They must prove in beyond the reasonable doubt uh, that the accused is guilty. Some of the questions that you get, let's go and check another question from the, the those questions. And then here, they said that if the case goes on a trial, which burden must be discharged to the court and by who? Is the same question. I told you, by the state, and the state must prove beyond a reasonable doubt. Then let's check another question. Uh, let's check another question here. Maybe we'll get another. Name the process which is applied by the court in deferring put forward to the another date. The case as indicated uh, above. Uh, yeah, name the process that takes place. You know, we are all going to the trial. Before the trial, then they said, no, we must put it to the next date. So what the, 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 the judge must do? Which process judge must uh, uh, follow? Uh, or which process must take place? You are saying the prosecutor raised and said, well, we have not gathered more information about this criminal, so we will need you to set another date. So when we set another date, what do we call it? Uh, what do we call that process in court? Postponement. Yes, we call it postponement. Before the trial is postponement. Now, number 1.2, they said that name the process that is applicable. If trial is already... Now the trial has already been... Uh, uh, we postponed the case. Now the case is on the trial. We call the witness. The witness has, has been examined. Now it's 4 o'clock. Now uh, people must go home now. So name the process that takes place while the trial has already started. Yes, we have to adjourn, adjourn the case. So we adjourn for the next day. You must never forget that when you yeah. get into the examination. Uh, okay. Yes, let's check another question. Just take a question from different papers. Uh, yes, the one point seven is here saying that name the term which describes uh, describes the putting forward to the next date of the case uh, against C and D before the trial starts. I've already told you that it's a postponement. They have to postpone the case. And then name the procedure which may be used to challenge some of the irregularities which occurred during the trial if C and D are subsequently convicted. Now, these guys are convicted. They have been sentenced. They have to go to prison. But they realize that there is an irregularity in the trial. So which uh, one they must apply? Um... I'm not sure, but if not review, then uh, um, appeal. But I'm definitely sure it's a re review. Yes, irregularities, they must uh, review the case. So this is just uh, yes. some of the questions that you get, which comes with a free max. Uh, mostly it's 10 questions, it's 10 marks that you have to get for free. So you must get everything yes. here. There's, there's nothing here. Uh, uh, which one now? Ah, uh, those are, are very easy. If he uh, has to proceed with the case, M somehow omits to inform A and C about their right to legal representation. You must know that people must be informed by the by the magistrates when they appear to the court that they must be informed. It's a law. You must be informed that you have a, uh, you must have a judge. You, you must have a legal representation. If you don't have one, then you must uh, seek from seek the state one, or you can represent yourself. But that is a very risky uh, to do that. So it's yes. very clear that if you do not inform uh, those people, you have already violated the procedure which must be followed. 
Therefore, such a trial will be irregular. There will be irregularities in that trial uh, because the trial will amount not to fair. So the trial will not be fair. So for fair trial, you must do. So the consequences is that there will be no fair trial. Therefore, the trial will have to be restarted uh, as a result of that. It can be restarted or they follow another uh, consequence. They, they can take uh, different measures um, as a result of that. So these are the questions. One, which when you go to examination, it's a pre-10 months that you just get. I try to answer some of the questions and see if you can get them on the examination. It will be very much simple for you. Um, Uh, let me check another question which can be uh, mm. okay let me start in this question paper and see what we have here then we'll go to that question paper. Uh, violate his right to pride, Gracie. There are many question papers here. I want to find someone. Uh, what does it say? Oh, uh, no, I've already, let me check this one. Uh, let me check this one. Uh, Uh, in the course of in the investigation, Sergeant V sets out to interrogate me in order to obtain more information regarding the crime committed. However, C asserts his right to remain silent and also insists that as a free citizen, V does not have the right to question B discuss whether these assertions are correct. Let's go. It says that in the course of the investigation, the sergeant V said sets out to interrogate C in order to obtain more information regarding the crime committed. However, C asserts his right to remain silent and also insists that as a free citizen, V does not have the right to remain to question him, discuss whether these assertions are correct. Uh, okay, now let's go and answer the question. Um, we have to read about the remaining of the silence in order um just a quick question do you have your your textbook your textbook with you so that we can get like a solid answer i do know the the answer by heart but i just wanted us to also refer to the textbook just to make sure that the answer is not at skeleton it would be yeah Okay. All right. The right to remain silent. The suspect and accused have a fundamental right to remain silent. See section 35. I, I don't use a book, uh, that book. I will send you the one that I use uh, when we are done. Yeah, I wanted to ask for it. 35, three of the Constitution. The right to remain silent is based on the presumption 
that the accused is innocent of the fact of the matter. So during the pre-trial, the one that we are talking about, the pre-trial, it is important that you distinguish between the right to remain silent and the right not to be questioned. The accused does not have the does have the first mentioned right, but does not have the let see uh, they provided the key. Yes. An accused may not be taken into custody with the exclusive purpose of questioning him. The suspect may be questioned within reasonable limits. They provided the case. But he need not to reply to questions. Unabated questioning by the police with the purpose of obtaining a self incriminating evidence from a suspect can have a bearing on the admissibility of the evidence obtained in this manner. Before the commencement date of the Constitution, exclu exclusionary rules did not apply in South Africa. All relevant evidence was admissible, although there were indications that a court could exercise the discretion to exclude evidence which had been obtained in a grossly irregular manner. They provided a, a case. Section 35, subsection 5 of the Constitution expressly provides for the exclusion of evidence obtained in a manner which infringed on another fundamental right. Section 35, subsection 5 should, however, not be interpreted as a total exclusionary email, rule. Exclusionary rule. The section clearly provides for discretion to be applied by the court to first ascertain whether the admission of such evidence would render the trial unfair and or whether it will prejudice the administration of justice. In in state visas Melani and others, it was decided to exclude the evidence with regard to a pointing out because though the accused's right to representation was explained to him, it could not be expected of him to understand the content of his right of representation. That is why Fro Men J pays such premium on the right to counsel, namely to protect the right to remain silent and the right against self incrimination. Yeah. The decision in Melane was confirmed in S versus Meg. Max and another uh, general question for every criminal court is that whether admission of any evidence will unfairly influence his or their right to fair trial. And then we are talking about the questioning of a suspect should be done in accordance with so called judges' rules. These rules are not requirements for admissibility, but none of observance of any of these rules could in certain circumstances show that a statement was not given voluntarily. In exception case, exceptional cases, there is a legal duty to give certain information and the suspect to remain silent is affected. Section 41 of the CPA provides that the suspect is obliged to furnish his full name and address without delay. Note the requirements laid down in Section 41 before such a duty arises and then a statement made by the accused to the police prior to being advised of the right to remain silent and where it is clear that he was suspect was found to be inadmissible. The right to remain silent, the right not to testify in proceeding, and the right not to give self incriminating evidence. Content and rational. The right to remain silent can be described as the absence of legal obligation to speak. Concern for the reliability I believe the right to remain silent is necessary. And then then we were done. There are many stuff there. And I don't want to read everything. Then we have already answered even the, that question number 2.2, which says that after the arrest but before his court appearance, he requested to be afforded the opportunity to be represented by an attorney, but it's informed by his agent B that the right to legal representation is 
strictly speaking only applies to actually court proceedings. Um, the main aim of the court is to make, we have already read uh, in one of the question paper, and I want to go back to that question paper, uh, which has already said that we have a duty um, to finish the for a fair trial. So in order to answer number B, you must firstly say that the right to a fair trial demands that they should be informed participation by the unrepresented accused. A court is therefore required to explain all procedural rights and options to an unrepresented accused and to do so at a very critical stage. And this case that has been followed is the case of Ramoripo. Um, that the fact that the accused rights have been explained properly should be recorded. Perusal of the record must reveal precisely what was conveyed to an unrepresented accused regarding the right to consult with a legal practitioner of a choice. The right to be provided with a legal practitioner at a stage expense, state expense, and the right to dispense with a legal practitioner. And the reaction thereto must appear expressly the record of proceedings. And then what I want to, to tell you is that uh, in the, they said that uh, and to do so at a very critical stage, meaning that at the beginning of the stages, there must be a fair trial request that in application. It is the task of the presiding judicial officer to explain the right to an unpresented accused and such duty cannot in the ordinary course be delegated to an interpreter. So those were the cases that you must use to answer. However, we are not done answering this question. Then we are still uh, explaining that question. Then we will go on to the right to legal representation. Section 73 of the PCPA confirms the fundamental constitutional rights. Uh, remember, detained persons, accused and sentenced prisoners, all have the right to have a legal free practitioners appointed to them at a state extent. If substantial injustice would otherwise result, and they must be informed of this right on the first occasion, then they have given the constitution. Where youth are involved in crime, their right to legal representation will be obviously obvious that you will meet the best interest. Refusal to guarantee the accused the opportunity to obtain legal representation at arrest during detention or during trial can lead to the conviction and sentence being quashed, depending whether the court exercised its discretion properly. Then those were the cases. So number that 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 case was asking uh, where I'm reading. Uh, let me go to that one. Uh, this one? No, no, no. It's not. Remember, the question made clear, uh, 2.2, that after the arrest, but before he spoke to court appearance, and I've already answered the those one from the book of the criminal, 2.2. Only applies during the courts, and I, 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 I now I'm reading here where they made it clear that the refusal to grant the accused the opportunity to obtain legal representation at arrest, during detention, or during trial can lead to the conviction and sentence being squashed, depending whether the court, which also stated the assertion uh, of that guy, then there is a there's a lot that you can read about this representation. 
But what is the most important is the fact that V uh, assertions will be very very wrong uh, because it could lead the, to the case being uh, squashed the way they have explained that the case can be squashed so let me share so that was 2.2 2 when we were answering that it can lead to his court to be squashed. Then it was a free 10 marks, uh, which you should have got. You must get it in the examination. Uh, now let's take another question. Uh, that was a free 20 marks. And uh, let's check another question. Let me check another question. I don't want to do some easier um, questions. Um, yeah, I I just wanted to find out that I will, and we continue later on because at five I have to to do something. Only oh, if that's fine with you. Yeah, that's that's, 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 that's that's fine. That's fine. That's fine. You know, um, it's not. Uh, I understand even tomorrow. Uh, you will be available. Yes. I understand. Uh, you will be checking. Check all the questions that are hard, because if you go by the way I do, uh, I'll just choose the, the questions that are not hard. So you will be choosing from all these question papers. Then you will bring the question that you feel like is hard. Then I think that uh, I don't want to start the question that is uh, that requires time since you'll be. Uh, going somewhere at five, then I think that um, we'll have to to meet. If we fail to meet today, we'll meet tomorrow. Yeah, let's just say we'll meet tomorrow. Uh, today there's a lot. Okay. Then we'll meet tomorrow. Uh, I'll tell you time uh, tomorrow. Tomorrow is Saturday. Yes. Yeah, we'll hear if you are not going anywhere. Then we'll meet tomorrow. No problem. No, I'm not going anywhere. I just also wanted to ask you to send me the textbook that you've been using. Maybe today I can go through it and then. Yeah, Marat, I won't encourage you to go that one first. I will encourage you to go with the oh. textbook, uh, the one for the. Uh, that one you will just use it as a supplement. So go first with that okay. one. Uh, I will still send you that one. The other one. Uh, no problem. Okay, thank you so much. Okay, then we'll... Um, oh, I just... Also, I wanted to find out for North 